Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man shot during operation in Spanish town, two guns, ballistic vests seized. Three men were held and two firearms were seized during a joint police military operation in Spanish town St. Catherine on Thursday. Police said a ballistic vest was also seized in the raid. Reports are that about 5.20 a.m., a team of officers was conducting a condor and search operation in the St. John's Road area when they were greeted with gunfire. Police said they responded and returned fire. At the end of the gun battle, one man was found suffering from gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he has since been admitted. Two other men were also taken into custody. Police said during a search of the area, two 9mm pistols were seized. Gunshot victim names alleged attacker before dying. A construction worker from Clarendon is now behind bars after he was named as the alleged shooter by a gunshot victim who later died in hospital. Melford Ellis, otherwise called Melly of Rosehood in Clarendon, was arrested and charged with the murder of Cosmer Simit, which occurred on April 26 in Sandy Bay in the parish. Ellis was also charged with illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition, the police said. Reports from the police are that about 6.30 a.m., Simit was walking in a section of Sandy Bay known as Gully when he was allegedly shot by Ellis. The police were summoned and an injured Simit was taken to hospital where he allegedly reported that Ellis was the person who had shot him. Simit died the following day, the police said. Ellis was later arrested and charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being arranged, the police said. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson and DCP Vitz Bailey seeks to address questions revolving in Western Jamaica, increased murders in St. Mary, crime against children, among other issues. As you say, what I said was Western Jamaica is uh, the area that we see, not only in St. James, but also in Westmoreland. So we're really seeing it uh, down there. It's, it is what is accounting for our increase. To that extent, we are um, developing an uh, operational support team at the area level, uh, quite a strong team that is scheduled to, to join them down there to increase their capacity to, to mount an operational response. And at the moment, we have a, another set of officers going through quick response motorcycle training to shore up there and other places across the country. The, the main issue facing police officers uh, in specifically in St. James, Mon uh, Montego Bay, of course, are the uh, violence that arises out of the conflicts largely between people um, who are involved in the lottery scamming uh, industry or business issue, uh, trade. So, it, so we're comparing this year to last year, yes. Um, what is happening there, a lot of the St. Mary um, homicides are related to interpersonal issues. Um, I'll probably ask Mr. Bailey want to elaborate on that if you can, if you want to. Huh? No, okay, so yes, so a lot of those are interpersonal. Um, the team there has, uh, you know, done a number of things to get on top of this, and so we should see that slow down. But this conflict, these interpersonal conflicts, they start and it becomes a tit for tat thing, and then they they play out. Some of them are related to the sim, uh, one family, uh, and then that uh, plays out in a number of murders. So last year they only had one, I think, up to this point. And this year, or two, and this year two up to this point, and this year they have 16. So you're, you're quite right. It is alarming for us. Uh, we, are, um, we, are, we are also sent additional assets recently. I sent additional assets to St. Mary to assist them to address that problem and also met with the St. Mary team about two weeks ago uh, to look at their issues uh, down there. So I expect that St. Mary will also start to come back into line. Um, but their numbers overall are not as high as some of the other places, like down in the West, where we're looking at uh, significant numbers. But the increase is alarming, and we are intervening to deal with that. 
Okay, um, so I don't know that crimes against children are not uh, being uh, investigated. That's not, that's not so. But um, as an investigative matter, you know, let me I'll ask Mr. Bailey to uh, answer that. Uh, what we do is that we treat each investigation as being important, whether it's against a child or a, a, a woman or a male. And I, as the commissioner said, I, I do not see any special, um, what I consider, attack on our children. We, we live in a very violent society. And in some instances, when these individuals are perpetrating their, their crimes, it doesn't matter who is there, whether there's a child or a woman, they will attack. But it's not a direct attack on our children. I am not aware of us not investigating the cases against um, children. We, pay, we place a lot of emphasis on those type of investigation. And if there is a specific case that you have concern with, then we can seek to address that. But generally, we, we, we pay attention to cases involve children because, I mean, maybe it's a human thing. There's a passion. There's a special, you know, desire when there are crimes against children, the entire nation. And as a part of a nation, we also have our own interests and concerns. But we pay attention equally to all investigations. Um, whenever there's a siege of cash, there's a regime that is followed um, by the police. First of all, the funds have to be checked off. And there's a very time-consuming process that is used for example, registration of serial numbers, taking photographs, etc., that is done. And then, depends on the type of offenses, the financial investigation um, division do get involved and they will make the appropriate application to the court for the seizure of the cash. Once it is, it represents proceeds of crime. In the instant case that you are referencing, the investigation is ongoing, and I am not going to comment much on that, but that's the regime. The court will finally make the determination as to the disposal of the, the cash that is um, seized. Um, I just uh, note that if you remember, uh, not was it perhaps a month ago or so, probably a little over that, that we actually, in this very room, had a launch of the cash seizure um, handbook, as it were, uh, along with FID, MOCA, and the customs agency. And so, as I say, part, that is all part of us going after the money. So it's a collaboration that really allows us to get the success on this between ourselves and all the other agencies. So. It is actually quite timely that we got that, and that this, which is probably our largest um, cash seizure, um, uh, coinc coincident or only separated by a month and a half. Right. In relation to what has been happening in the St. John's Road area of the St. Catherine North Police Division, we can confirm that based on the analysis so far that it is indeed gang warfare and we have deployed additional persons in the area. We are also getting support from the Jamaica Defense Force. So we, you can expect, our decision can expect to see a significant increased police presence in those areas. Uh, task Force. Okay, so... Um let me just, I have a report here so I can uh, share this. So overall arrests, they've arrested 354 persons. Um, they have uh, apprehended 33 persons of interest, uh, 14 uh, wanted persons. They have been involved in the recovery of 20 weapons, 141, sorry, 341 rounds of ammunition uh, and 18 magazines. 
they have been involved in uh, the recovery or the seizure of 1,300 pounds of marijuana, uh, 23 pounds of cocaine. They were involved in the large cash seizure also that we had spoken about earlier. They have uh, seized a number of motor cars, motorcycles, um, and various other paraphernalia that is used in, 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 um, in crimes. So they have been very busy uh, apprehending persons, going after some key persons who are involved in criminal activities, gangs or scamming, uh, and really provide that support to both to uh, our investigators, both the CTOC, they provide support to uh, the narcotics division, they provide support to the divisional police, and they, they carry out their own um, operations as they get intelligence. So they, they have been very busy and contributing to the overall um, successes that we've had. Uh, there's no further update at this time. I mean, yes. we, based on our initial investigation, there's nothing of significance in terms of criminal investigation. The plane crash, we don't know, the, we're not certain the exact mission that it was on, but um, there's no further update on it. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.